Hi there, welcome back to EU4 Third Rome. We're Muscovy, we're playing as Muscovy on hard. And we're role playing it and uh, this means like we're, we're taking decisions as our ruler personally would have taken them, not as like the game would be optimized or something like that. We, we look at his characteristics and what he can do and we decide after that. Like that he's maybe a little bit of an administrator, he's careful. Intricate web weaver, incorruptible. There's a lot to be to be taken from that. And yeah. But that said, we have a lot to do. So um let's get to it. Um first I wanted to know uh, a little bit about like the Russian abilities and about the, the boyars. The boyars are one of our estates, and the boyars have been or boyar. Um they have been very valuable for Muscovy and all the um, eastern, maybe not Kazan and the Great Horde, but like in this area, they have been very influential. Tver, Rastov, like in the Russian part of of the land, like the boyars, you, you should imagine them as um, this. This calls them families of landed aristocrats in the country, and. Additionally, like they have been second only to the Knias, means like the, the king or duke or something himself. We're the Grand Knias because I think because we have vassals, the Grand Knias. And uh, like they, they have been something comparable, if you're coming from a European background, to knights basically. They would have probably some land and maybe a great house or maybe even a small castle i'm not sure about the castle though that that's what what would have been like in in germany and the little kingdoms there and the little like every every little um village basically had their their local knight <laughs> and they had these little castles and like um houses of armor or so to say and similar to that you can imagine the boyars and uh, they like were first they were bound to families like it was like in Europe as well and later on after some administrative reforms after like the the successor of Vasily the second they became Boyars was was a class that was now out of merit, so you could become a boyar out of merit, like similar to um, to England and the House of Lords. There are some lords like of of the families, so to say, and then some later lords will um, lift it to that status through their merit for the country, and like that is that is the difference. That is the um, development and as Muscovy grew into Russia and became bigger and bigger also the the personal relations of the Knias to the Boyars um, declined and they were like just some administrators and protectors of the land but on a list on an administrative list of course there were some influential Boyars that wouldn't be on a list only but in the uh, in the mind of in the mind of the Knias. But um, in general like they they were much more like you could say part of the administration rather than uh, like rulers of their own. So um so much about the Boyars and the Knias and um yeah now something a subscriber has said to me is i should uh, pronounce if there is an s said like similar to muscovy i, I should pronounce it mushawi and muscovit i mean for sure nizhny novgorod is is, is uh, pronounced like that and all the s said um things I'll 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 pay further notice to to pronounce that right. So um, if you're 
if you really know like Russian or a Slavic language, you 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 don't get your ears bleed. I'll I'll try to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah it's important it's important it is definitely important i'm i want to learn it like because yeah i also want to learn about the history here that's why i'm going into that so um the things we have to do like age of discovery we want to do more there we have an already controlled another center of trade in taking novgorod it is not yet like quiet or much integrated into our country but now that we have tasted that sweet thing we're looking for other centers of trade and what could be a target is Kazan itself like the province of Kazan would be a tasty inland center of trade to get that would bring us further for the age of discovery would be really helpful for us so but um, we want five centers of trade for that. And that is really something our administrator king or Knias rather uh, would look forward to do. Like if we could get other trade centers like this one here, Astrakhan would be, would be a candidate. Unfortunately, it's Sunni and we cannot convince them <laughs> to our faith yet, but that would be possibility and we're also looking for other trade centers i mean look at that that is in lithuania that is kiev a very valuable trade trade center trade node and um that would definitely be also a good choice if we could get there that would be great Unfortunately, Lithuania is still very, very strong, so we might have to wait for another um, opportunity. Baltic Sea would be great too. And if we could, could get control of the White Sea, that would be awesome, because that is also fully... I mean, it's not that, that important, but it's like really one of the the trade centers we want to control in the future for for the the story too so these these would be some of our goals so apart from uh, stabilizing the country and integrating our vessels we might look for the trade centers and we might claim them so next thing to do is what should we do with our power with with our points that we get now we get so many points now thanks to our power projection that is so high we have a, a, a bonus of one per power and what should we do there hmm we should definitely look into technologies because we're already behind there we have a neighbor bonus and we should look that we don't fall back too too fast or too far so we'll at least develop to four and then see if this, this gets better. Maybe we'll have a little bit of development in Kostroma because we've had an event there giving us much better development here. It's called enlarged territories for us, like for the crown, for the Knias, so to say. And it's 10% cheaper now to develop. Um, and we have, we, additionally to that, we have the icon of Christ, Christ the Pank Pantocrator, and we have encouraged development there. We might change that though, um, if we want to go for more techs in the future. And we'll change all that. We have encouraged development here in Muscovy and here in Kostroma because of the event. And that is very helpful. We might look into, into Moscow just right now to see if we can change the edict. We can go to no edict, which would... Uh, definitely help us from from the money point of view we could go for other promotions like we could protect the trade that would be good could go for an advancement effort maybe that would be nice in our um in our capital but i think we're going we're going for no edict here for now remove that edict 
because we need some money and and that is um, going to help us so we'll just encourage development in Kostroma now so that's that's the thing to, to do like research the text and develop Kostroma a bit Kostroma is is really good because it's um, also at the center of us this at this at the center both of Muscovy and of maybe future acquiring of the vessels so it could be some sort of a local um, center for us so maybe we we have also another rival we, we could still take and maybe we could take the great horde because they have astrakhan and we could maybe get that center of trade later but that's possibly too far now we have to look into the loan the loan is coming due in two years and maybe we should we should pay for that thing now i'm not sure we could pay it back it might be a good idea but usually it was like good to to wait for a while on the other hand, we could now ask our estates, meaning our burghers, to ask for a contribution there for some money and then get rid of the loans. In turn, like, I mean, we are losing loyalty then, we could grant them some monopoly charters, which would give them some influence and uh, also some loyalty back. So that, that would be the thing I'd like to do. The interaction can only be, be done every 10 years, so we'll just ask them for a contribution right now. And we'll repay, yes, the loan. And now we'll look in the, into the estate of the burghers again. You can see they have a decreased loyalty to 40. So we, we don't have to do something. And it's increasing. It will change towards 50% every month. So it's quite okay. We could grant them monopoly charters. But only if the loyalty goes down further. And now let's start. <laughs> let's see what we can do. Yeah, we're working on annexing a vessel here. Yaroslavl. They're really friendly to us and we want to integrate them into our country, which will be done soon. Now we, <laughs> thankfully, we have some income again. We have an expiring Kazus belly against the Great Horde. They insulted us, which is why we're really looking into making them rivals. But it's on the other hand, it's kind of complicated because you can see here we have... Um, on Kazimov. We have Sunni religion and we cannot convert them at all. Like, So it would be kind of bad to take more provinces of Sunni faith because we have no... We, have, we don't have the ability to convert them at the moment. So this would decrease our unity. It would, it would bring um, unrest to the people. We want to be united. I mean, we want to be the third Rome, meaning the, the fallen Constantinople. And we want to have the Orthodox faith everywhere. So we're looking to... Um, aha, look at that. They've embraced feudalism, speeding up their technological... Ooh. So, yeah, we're looking into ideas here. We might go for religious ideas because we have three more missionary strengths then and another missioner missionary and that will that will help greatly when when trying to convert these and it would be needed to to go for that and it would also be like fitting our historical mission if we want to be the third rome 
we have to look into that. We have to take this idea probably. For now, it's it's a little bit of quiet integrating and, and seeing to decrease the unrest of separatism here. We're not spending too much too much of our power at the moment. We'll see if we still have um, something to develop here. We still have, I think, the enlarged territories. Until August 1458, so we should really spend some more points now developing that province. Still use that and then go for the research. And then once that is run out, um, we'll also end our special development to save some some money. We'll spend some administrative power, military power, diplomatic power. A little bit more military power. We'll develop that for good. Maybe once more. Once more here. Once more here. So we're at 25. That's quite a good development here for us. Yeah, look at that. Maybe we can we can get even a little bit higher, maybe to 30. 30 is like a large city. That would be great to have here still. So we'd have Kostroma as another very good developed um, province. Look at that now. Annex subjects integrating Yaroslavl. When a smaller country gives up its independence to join a greater realm, there is a lot of adapting, and while some parts are easy, the administration of the realm will still need to expand to ac ac accommodate all possibilities. Integration is really a slow process. And we've gained more prestige. Maybe we'll get to 50 <laughs> someday. <laughs> we have to get to a little bit more diplomatic power now until August. I think it, it just it's just fitting that we can uh, increase that once more. And now we have like a free choice. We could ally with them. They would most likely accept, but we I think we still we, we have to go for uh, an alliance first and then we can ask for the vassalization if we have relations of 190 so Odoyev would be good to um, snap up as another ally so we're into the alliance with them look at that these are our new territories Yaroslavl Mologa we have a royal marriage offer, of course, yes. This is some kind of role play. Um, we, why wouldn't you like accept a marriage offer from your? And these are all our relatives. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, we have embarrassed the court. The Grand Knie has committed an absolute faux pas today in front of the court. A few foreign dignitaries. The repercussions of this will take years to repair. Blame the Grand Knias. Yeah, he's he's not the best in diplomacy, which is why we're getting these these events. <laughs> but we should now look into improving the relation with Odoyev so we can make them our vassal. That would be like some great thing. Now, August. The last chance for Kostroma. No! It has already run out. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll lift it to, to one more time and then we'll, we'll end the edict that we have running. Good look at in Yaroslavl. We have that edict of local development cost. 
which is now very costly. Now, the diplomatic approach of the Queen. Hmm. First, let's finish the development of Kustroma. We have another large city here. Then we'll end the edict here. No edict. Maintenance goes down, our income goes up. And let's see to the diplomatic approach of the Queen. While growing up, Maria enjoyed studying people. Maria is our wife. She often made a game out of trying to predict the actions of the people around her, finding it not only fun, but as the years went by, an increasingly useful habit to keep. Thankfully, moving to the royal court of Muscovy, Mashovi has not caused Maria to abandon her neck for intrigue. <laughs> yeah, she's, a, the, she's an intricate web weaver. If anything, she has gotten a lot of practice. During some of our recent, no, recent negotiations with foreign di diplomats, these skills have actually proven most valuable to the council. Excellent! Look at that. 50 diplomatic power. We love our wife. Not only because of that, but we love her, really. <laughs> Very good. Oh, <laughs> we'll, we'll wait for some more administrative power to, to be able... Yeah, we, we really want to increase our stability to... Look at that. Kostroma. Kostroma is now basically like the... Um, the main city here, so to say. Before we build something, we have to, we have to prepare a lot. Look at that. Now, a great synod is happening. Let's let's stop for a while. What is about this great synod? Um, oh my god, our, our legendary general will no longer serve us. He died from an illness contracted in the field. His ruthless tactics should inspire great fear. Could inspire great fear in our enemies. This was the leader at the start. He had four shock, three fire, three maneuver. He was like the the giant of the battlefield. We're really, we're remembering him and saying, oh my god, he has done so much for our country, for the Kniaz, for orthodoxy. He'll, he'll be uh, interred in a, in a state act, really. Now, we have a great synod. What is a synod? A synod is like a gathering of bishops, of orthodox bishops, and uh, like if they if they gather they they elect or I don't know like there is one of them who is like um, the the prime inter pares like the the um, the prime man among equals that is the metropolitan like it's like the <laughs> sort of the speaker of that bishop um, assembly and. The Great Synod may be a synod of all the metropolitans in our country together. Like, even, like, they might, might have elected a super metropolitan or something like that. A patriarch in that case. The church has gathered in a Great Synod. They are asking for your support and certain privileges in return for helping fight anti feudal heresies that are stalking our land. Do we help the church keep the people in their place, or do we support these movements to break up the f old feudal order? We could grant the privileges. Or well, they are on their own. Mm -hmm. I mean, we really want to support the church. That's how we tick. I mean, from a gameplay point of view, we would certainly go, ah... What do we need? Patriarch authority. Let's go for stability. But we want to um, further the, the church as we're, we're feeling we're replacing Constantinople. So we'll grant the privileges. And if need to, we can now replace um, our icon again from Christ the Pantocrator. Construction coast, development coast goes, cost goes down to my Maybe the icon of St. Michael, if we're at the war, or the icon of Eleusa, or like the icon of, of St. John Climacus, if we want to spread the institutions. 
So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to use our administrative powers um, to increase stability instead. Oh, Lithuania have the goal to claim Colm as their own. Now that is definitely um, a thing we should watch because it's dangerous. They are dangerous to us. But they're at war. I mean, they're at war and they are, it seems like they are losing the war. So that might represent an opportunity. Is that true? Well, look at that. They are losing that wall. Which means we should... Um, this guy is in Kazan. We'll, we'll send our, our spy guy now here to, to Lithuania. We'll boost stability. Because as an administrator we, we love stability. And we'll send someone here to build a spy network. Cause we're intricate web weavers. Our wife is one and we are one. This could represent the opportunity we have waited for. And we discovered an agent. A diplomat from Norway has been discovered while building a spy network. Too. Everyone's building their spy networks at us. Look at our subjects. Well, the liberty desire of Perm is quite, quite rising a bit. We should see to that. Their opinion is quite good. Uh, we should look that we might integrate them next. If we can, like, might be something. But before we want to want to get Odoyev as a vassal. That is a great opportunity. We we don't want to spoil it. If we have 190, that will be very good and very helpful to have another vassal. Because we're the Grand Knias and <laughs> that is what we do. We have vassals. Let's have a look at, oh, they have the Iberian wedding. Let us bind their, their dynasty to ours, which means they want to unite probably Aragon and Castile. Hmm, hmm, so much to do, so little points. <laughs> oh, an advisor of us has died, statesman Nazari Svensov. Ooh, ooh, he was increasing our diplomatic reputation. That statesman, I think. Yes, and was a great help in, in diplomatic relations. So, hmm, whom, whom should we take now? I mean, we have different... We can only afford, like, the, the plus one guys. So we have the choice between Alexander Kamensky, with the, the quicker spy network construction, in very good, of course, <laughs> together with our intricate web weaver, that could be a real big strength. Or improving relations faster with Alex Rajevsky. Also, a really, really good choice. Now, if we're looking at our, our leader, I mean, from the gameplay, I would probably take him to balance that out. <coughs> but we have two intricate web weavers here. And they're definitely interested in, in uh, going strong on that spy network construction. So, we're recruiting Alexander Kamensky, a spy master. Our eyes and ears in foreign countries aids us in our efforts to collect both military and political information from our rivals without their knowledge. There we go, another intricate web weaver, so to say. <laughs> Adding to our expertise. Oh, we have still unrest. Do we have it in Tozok, Kolm and Novgorod. Yes, these are the, the provi provinces we took from, from Novgorod. Ah, 
our armies are good. We'll have to look how this how this war develops. Look, they are beating back now. Oh, they have brought one combatant out of this. Uh, now they're only against the Teutonic and Livonian order. They may they may still win this now. But the Teutonic order, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they're, they're also losing. Who is not losing in this war? Every combatant is losing here. Hmm. We'll have to have a look at um, the armies. Lithuania. They have 15,000 infantry and 4,000 cavalry. Currently 9,000 manpower, 19,000 total. We're much more powerful than them. Whom are they allied with at the moment? Denmark and Poland. Now that's really a problem because Poland is quite strong. We have, of course, our vassals. It's hard to tell. I mean, we should at least take Odoya first and we should have some claims. Otherwise, um, it wouldn't make sense to, to go for anything there. Oh, the last jousting tournament. We can feel it in the wind. Soon our equestrian elite will be nothing more than a dream remembered as the chivalrous tradition of the boyars dies out before the onslaught of modernity. The world is changing, but for now, for one last time, let the knights or the boyars of Musk Mushawi ride. We can, we can gain a lot of prestige and we have the mission to gain prestige and we're definitely inclined to do we can lose 30 splendor but the moral of armies the army tradition the yearly prestige is going on and maybe we're doing this to honor our heir even veliki rurikovic he's industrious and he's a great warrior so forward to glory he's overseeing the tournament of the last jousting now we're we're in the positive from the prestige. And we should look into this. We could, I think, fabricate a claim on Kazan now. Claim on Kazan. And maybe um, we'll take another claim. What could be a good province? This one looks nice. It has severe winter. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, definitely something near to that. Culture is Kazani. Yes, maybe maybe one more of the Kazanis. Maybe we'll look into Veda Suvar. Ah, we don't have enough. Now we could. If there is a chance, we can take Kazan. There is an opportunity. For glory. Now, Odoyev. Will we reach the 190? <laughs> I hope we will. Oh, look at that. M monasteries flourish in Murum. Because we have um, supported the Orthodox faith, probably... It's going well for them. The Bishop of Sostal reports that the local monastic communities are growing at an unprecedented speed. The estates of a local monastery in, in Murom have in fact grown so big and are so well kept that they have become the envy of our local administrator. The governor has become entangled in a conflict with the monks over where exactly the demarcation between their lands and those of the Grand Principality goes. The time has come for central authorities to step in and settle the dispute. Helping the monastery would undoubtedly secure their gratitude, but this could also be an opportunity to get hold of more land for the state. Um, mm -hmm. We could uh, gain base production, a conflict over the land, Sustal area, for 15 years, increase development cost, Oh, we must listen to these men of God. I mean, we have done something for them. Maybe we should take something from 
<laughs> from them because we're also administrators. Hmm. The envy of the local administrator. More production in Murom. I mean, if if the the administrator is going to to use this land now, if this is like something spurring him on, like firing his ambitions, then we will help him. Even if it gets us some unrest, that that might be worth it. We have a slight conflict, and we won't develop that much, but. Again, one base production, which means like trade is going up there. We're definitely like the the Grand Knias is an administrator. He, he likes economy too, so he would have like a balanced uh, view on this. We have often um, helped the church, but he has no really special things here. And it has nothing, nothing to do with corruption. I mean, our air even would, would tend to, to go into the governor thing because it increases production and he's also industrious. So we'll go for, for our governor this time. So stall area. But the whole area gets some unrest. So this is a light decision. Of course, we're waiting for our power to, to increase at the moment to be able to research now. So we won't develop anything. <laughs> because the neighbor bonuses are really pouring in. Our diplomat in Lithuania has been discovered. My god, reducing the size by 50. Agent discovered. Ah. Uh. Spy discovered minus one thousand. Size forty nine. Mm, it's decreasing, so we should use it right now. So this is Riazan. This is Belarusian, but Riazanian is really what we want to get, like Bryanskas. Has a normal winter and some grain, and this has some cloth. Hmm. And this is close to Odoyev. Smolensk. Or maybe this would be would be a good province to go for. But this is woods. I mean, we know the woods. This is easy to get. Um. Yeah, let's let's actually try to get Riazama and make a claim for that. And we can fabricate more claims, it seems. Toropets would be another good candidate. Let, let's look at that. That is woods and it has grain. Grain in the woods. Um, Toropets and Brianskas. Hmm, yeah, why not why not Toro Pets? There we go. Enough to justify a war. Maybe not right now. Because they're still um they're still strong. They're not in a war anymore. They haven't gained something, they haven't lost something. Poland is the problem, they are strong. Take Polokas. Polokas, oh, for Odoyev. Interesting. We should look into integrating more vassals. Um, 
Yeah, we wanted to look to, to Perm, but I think Priskov might be the next candidate here. We could integrate them. I'm sorry if I if I have to look a little bit. Annex the vessel. No diplomats to send. It would be possible though. First we want to improve. Yeah, we will we'll send him away. He's discovered. There's no point in staying here for for now. Um We'll leave him be for now. Let's see if we can do something. Maybe again in Novgorod. Because the truce ends in in ten years. It, it might be worth it to to pick up some spy network there. Or it would be worth it to improve our relations with Pskov. Annex them yet, but I think we, we still need um, some relations improved with them. Before we do that. that that opportunity is oh the world has decided not to entertain Lithuania's great claim for greatness nice so they are not a great power anymore Holy Roman Empire has the Palatinate <laughs> oh my god <laughs> as an emperor that is crazy a bit it is really crazy because Palatinate is such a such a small uh, thing Oh my god, a military lead another military leader has died. General Oreg Aprushin Aprushin will no longer serve us. He died in the army camp in Novgorod. Died too soon. Without being able to accomplish much of now. Ooh. Our generals are leaving us. That is that is bad news. Truce will expire in ten years though. So uh, now we'll send this guy away for now and we'll offer Odoyev the vassalization we have a new vassal and <laughs> that is good because it also disbands the trade league of Novgorod which was our other um, thing we were looking for when doing this <laughs> it's really good to have one on, on your historical rival. I mean, look at this. They want our provinces. They hate us with a with a passion. <coughs> so now um, we can send him in to Pskov to annex less than. Oh, they have fifty liberty desire now. Why do they have fifty liberty desire? What is going on there? Why do why why is it so big? Is it the relative power? Do we need more army? That is really or is it because we have gotten another vessel? Hmm. We should definitely increase our armies. And then we'll see. We have to analyze this, so. Let's see. It's because of our diplomatic reputation. That is bad for us. And it's because they have better technology than us. <laughs> diplomatic technology. So. That is really a crisis. And. Yeah, but our Grand Knias cannot like. He is an administrator, so he will not go increase the diplomatic power. But what he will do is save up the diplomatic power to increase the technology. That is what he'll do. Um, and he'll build armies. 
because yeah he's inclined to do that he has military skill too so uh, <laughs> for me that's a sign that he's he's likely to build some military instead of diplomatics so we'll build some military let's see what can we have here we have a supply limit of 19 and 5,000 men here. Well, let's let's build some infantry, maybe. Two infantries here. And... One infantry here. Maybe some... One cavalry here. So he'll increase the army and he'll wait for... Diplomatic increase. Now, if you go, well, if we were going for optimized gameplay, we should now definitely put the national focus to diplomatic power, and then try everything in in our way to improve the diplomatic technology. High liberty desire. Yes, we know. We know. Rebel uprising. Mm -hmm. Novgorodian separatists. Ooh, look at that there. <laughs> Eighty percent that can't stand. We we have to do something. We could boost stability. That is a little bit harsh. We could lose prestige. No. We don't we'll not give this all to Novgorod. We'll we'll use some military power for harsh treatment. <sighs> that decreases it only by thirty percent. That is also hard. But it will help at least a bit. The separatists. Oh, we should we get this over with? Maybe. Look at that. We have. I thought we had the supply. Oh, this. Ah, we have a some kind of a winter here. Now we should split up again. Maybe. Maybe we have to do this. Maybe we have to go for the conflict. Um, how much can be hold there? 18 and 12 here, which means we have another 3 that we can give to this army. And we have another 5 which we can give to this army. So we'll send these guys over. Yes, some movement to Torzok. And then we'll, um, we'll see about... Oh, we have really received a truly generous donation of 22 from our friends in Perm. They are naive enthusiasts. Oh, we like you, Perm. We love you. This will help um, immensely. Immensely. They are friendly. Now, can we integrate them <laughs> again? <laughs> Not really. We could... And they have 52, but it helps a bit, right? Just a little bit, but a bit. So we're moving in there. We'll distribute the army. Let's see, it's I think it's winter still or something. 14, 14. So we'll split the army. Send one army here and the other army here. And we'll wait for that uprising. If that uprising happens, we'll we're ready. We're ready for it. We just have to wait for them. So Fizkov is improved to the maximum that we that we can have. Cannot annex them because of their liberty desire. But we can influence the nation. The trust of us changes for five, and it costs a little bit. It costs too much for us right now. We'll improve more relations now with our subjects. So we'll go for below zero and Rostov. Improve the relations there. Yeah, and we've done if we've done that in Rostov, we might annex them. Improve the relations here. 
in Restorv and in Below Zero. Because we have to do it at the moment. The Liberty Desire is such a problem and we, we want to integrate more of these guys into our realms. Oh, very good, a gift to the state. Good governance would sometimes prompt the nobility and the businessmen of the realm to donate cash to the treasury out of pure patriotism or in exchange for the sales of or transfer of honorary titles and positions. You could spend it generously. Look at that. We have a mission here to improve our prestige. Our re reward is 100 administrative power. We have a prestige of at least 50. So this comes as called. We'll spend the gift to the state generously. And we have improved our prestige. Because, yeah, I mean, we're an administrator, so we love the money. We also have some sense of prestige, at least our heir has. <laughs> so what should we do now? We could incorporate Pilko into our country. That is really not a bad idea. I have to look at the liberty desire again. Could we bring this down? Definitely. If we, if we have one better uh, diplomatic technology, then we might be able to do it. It will need a while still. I mean, both of these would be definitely our thing. Like, accumulate money. He is an administrator. He would say yes, he's careful too. So full coffers is something he would like as well. And incorporating Silkov is something we want to do anyways, so that would be really good. Hmm, it's a hard question because that might be something we cannot reach right now. Accumulating money, how long would that take? It would quite take a while. It is dependent on so many things. We reached that amount of money. I think we'll try to incorporate Prisco into our uh, Prikov into our country. We'll try that because, yeah, we're we're on the way to improve our army again. We'll see to it. We'll see to it. Now, and we're we're also improving our technology. At least the administrative one. Then we would have an idea group, and let's see what what comes out of that. Right. So, for now, thank you for watching. We have a clear plan for now, integrating Prishkov. And, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we can do with that, with that goal, and uh, with the future of our country. We definitely have to do a little bit in the research development uh, department, or our vessels will <laughs> break away. But that should be possible. At least our next king might be, um, might be, um, yeah, might be good enough, might be intelligent enough to do this. Like he has a good diplomatic skill and also a good military skill, and he's like a probably a power politician, not so much um, an administrator. I mean, he loves his production and stuff, but. He's a very good one in, in diplomatic and military skills, so he might go for that national focus here and improve that. So, um, let's see what we can do in the future. Well, I'd love to have you here <laughs> at the next opportunity. The next episode is coming. Have a good time until then, and happy gaming.